You might ask the question. We're going to go back to the um, the order of the Mishnah on the base. We're about uh, let's say third down, base of the base. Even though we finished yesterday, the Gemara asked. The Mishnah begins with kinuyim. Kinuyim means use words which are. It's like almost like a, a jargon. It's not instead of saying korban versus as konam. Instead of saying nozir, he says noziach. So it's like it's a jargon of the word, and it's been become part of the, the, the regular language, the regular vernacular. Like there are certain Hebrew words in English, and it's become part of the English language, although it's not originally an English word. It's a, it's a Hebrew word or a Yiddish word, whatever it is. That's kinuyim. So the Mishnah begins kinuyim, and then when the Mishnah goes to give examples, it speaks about yodayim. Will you say in a, it make an abbreviated <coughs> statement? And even though you didn't say the full statement, the partial statement is equivalent of the complete statement. So the Mari has two questions. Firstly, the Mishnah doesn't mention Yodayim. I mean, if you're going to discuss something such as Yodayim, right, this concept of a brief, say, which is a Kinuyim, Nedorim of Kinuyim, then you should say Yodayim of Nedorim of Yodayim, then you should give an example of what it is. I mean, how do you give an example of something which is not even discussed? So Mar says, Chusuri Mechsra. Meaning something's been deleted from the Mishnah. So it has to be said, it has to be stated. But then the Gemara has the question. But even if you insert it, but the Mishnah starts with Kinuyim, and the first thing that it it's first mentions Kinuyim, then it says Yodayim, if we make this insertion in the Mishnah. But what, what should we discuss first? You seemingly should discuss what, what the Mishnah begins with. Give examples of what Kinuyim are. Not give examples of what was discussed second. Right? If you make two statements, A, B. Now, an example of B, I'm seemingly if he said A, B, you now you give an example of A before you talk about the given example of B, but that's not what the Mishnah does. It says A, Kinuyim, then it says Yodayim, and then it says an example of Yodayim, instead of saying an example, you have to say an example of Kinuyim. The Mishnah doesn't give that example. That's where we're at. The Mara asks, Posach bi Kinuyim. Kol kinuyik nedorim umeforish yodos. It begins with kinuyim, then it goes to explain yodayim yodos. Haomel chaver mudani mimcho. That's the first question. Second question: Su yodos inchi. Right. Secondly, what did the Tana forget to discuss? Yodos yodos nedorim doesn't mention it. Period. You give me an example of it. It's like somehow it slipped his mind to even mention it. All of a sudden, you give me examples of it. So Mara says, I, the Mara says, I ribahon, the chasuri mechsura. Meaning, the Mishnah is discussing it, but it's been deleted. Meaning, it has to be reinserted. Vachik This is the way the Mishnah should read. Kol kinuye nedorim kinedorim. Using a jargon for nedorim, it's like he actually expressed the, expressed the word neder properly. V'yodos nedorim kinedorim. And yodos nedorim is like nedorim. So we're inserting so now we have said, good, we answered the first question, Lifrish Kinuyim Bereisha. But since the first statement of the Mishnah is regarding Kinuyim, what should be the first example we should have been giving, given of the first opening statement? Lifrosh Kinuyim Bereisha. So our answer is that, that the way the Tana presents is, always presents it in, 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 the, in the presentation, Ahu de Solik Minei Hu Ahu Mforish Bereisha. Always what he concludes, that's the example he gives first. He goes to explain, elucidate the last statement, rather than going back to the first statement. He gives examples, as it says in the Mishnah. Right? Mishnah Shabbos. What kind of oils do you use? Or what kind of wicks do you use? And what don't you use? Then it says, a madlikin. Then we give an example of what? Of the closing statement. What, what, what kind of materials are you permitted to installate food for Shabbos? And which types of materials not? Then it says, Ein tomnim. Me'ishi yotza, me'ena yotza. What is a woman permitted to wear out into a public domain? What is she not permitted to wear out in public domain? Then it says, Losei tzi'isha. So again, we, these are all examples. But although it's, it, it opened with one statement, it goes to elucidate examples of the closing statement. Cholech, Simor asks, V'cholech, the posel, l'mafarish, b'reish, you mean to say, this is, this is the way the Tana, the Tana always discusses the closing statement Rather than the opening statement, but Tanan, I'll give you many examples. We learned in Mishnayis. Yoshnochlum anchilin. they those who inherit and they pass on inheritance. Right? 
like a father and a son. A, so, a father inherits a son, and a son inherits a father, correct? That's Yoshim. Then there's Nochlim, no Manchilim. Then there's the one who inherits, but he doesn't pass on. A son inherits a mother, but a mother does not inherit a what? A son. Ve'elu nochlem umanchilin. So in this case, what what is the example? It speaks about it. You inherit. It goes both go both ways. And it's, then it says, no, there's the one who inherits, but he doesn't pass on to the one who inherits from. Then it goes to explain. And what's the example of the one who inherits and passes on to that same individual? It says, Yesh nochle umanchilin. It says, Ve'elu nochle manchilin. Yesh mutoris labaleyan v'asuris levimayim. They're those pe- women permitted to their husbands. If uh, uh, an almona marries an ordinary kohen. Permitted relationship. What happens if he dies and his brother is what? The surviving brother is a kohen girl. So, although she was permitted to the husband, she's not permitted to the brother, the surviving brother. Then they have a case, Liv Mayan. Umatoris Liv right? Asus Liv Mayan. Mutoris Liv Mayan. They're permitted to the Ovum. Asus Libalayan. What would that case be? With the, the one who married the Almona was a coin godel, the Kedushin. And then he dies, and his, the, bribe, the surviving brother is the ordinary coin. So she was not permitted to the husband, but she's permitted to the Ovum. Right? These are examples. Now it goes, and what's the example of El Mutoris Labalayan Vasuris Liv Mayan? So we're going back to the first case, the opening statement. These are the women who are permitted to the husbands and not permitted to the Ovum. Yesh tunin, there's a type of mincha, yesh tunin, shemad levona. Certain nochos require olive oil and levona, certain types of spice. Shemad levona, and there's those that have oil and not levona. Ve'elo tuna, shemad, and then it goes to explain which mincha needs both. So we're going back to the opening statement. Yesh tunis hagosha, ve'en tunis tenufa. There's a type of mincha that needs hagosha, means you touch it to the corner of Mizveach, the south, west of the corner of Mizveach. But you don't have to wave it. Tnu for lo hagosha. There, those, the those things that you wave and you don't touch them. Is it? Ve'elu tunis hagosha. Yesh bechor lenachla, vein bechor lekohen. There's a bechor lenachla. Now a bechor, a firstborn gets what? Receives a double portion of the inheritance. What happens if a woman miscarries, and then subsequently has a child after the miscarriage? It was a miscarriage. Let's say the child was the the fetus was three months old. Everybody agrees that's, that's considered she was carrying a viable child. She miscarries. Now, and then she has an, another child. This is the pigeon aben. There's no pigeon aben because this child is not the first child to open the womb. Because the fetus, the unborn fetus that was born, that was miscarried, that, that ch- fetus opened the womb. So the second child didn't open the womb. That's regarding pigeon aben. But what about regarding receiving a, second por- a, a double portion of the inheritance? Factually, that is the bechor. That's called bechor menachlo. That's the firstborn to inherit from the estate. That child will get a double portion. So we have Yesh Bukhod Lenachla Vein Bukhod Lekohen. Then you have Bukhod Lekohen Vein Bukhod Lenachla. What happens if a man has, has children from a previous wife and then he marries a woman who never had children before? So who is the Bukhod Lenachla, the eldest of the first wife? But let's see, the second wife he marries, now this is the first child. So that child is a Bukhod for Kohen. He has two pigeon aben because that child opened the womb. Of, of the mother, right? Be'ezu b'chor l'nachlo. So going back to the first case. Ve'in b'chor l'kohen. It's evident, so we see clearly that there is no one way. Here we see that what the Tano begins, he goes, right? He go, and when he goes to elucidate the case, it goes back to the opening statement. So Anatomar wants to say, Halein mishum da'af shulein b'forish ahud b'reisha. Because there's so many multiple examples in the Mishnah. So if you're going to go start with the last you'll become confused with the first, working backwards. So therefore, we go back to the beginning, and we go one after another from the beginning going forward. So Mar says, what are you talking about? Well, Bev, hey, behemo, yotso, behem, yotso. It says, an animal is, goes out with certain things, but doesn't go out with other things on Shabbos. Well, the Avsho, and there are multiple cases. And yet the Tana goes and addresses the first case, the opening statement. Uktani yotse gomol, el labdavka, rabdav gimol. Meaning there's no specific order. The Tano goes and presents it different ways. The Tanoim. Lav Davka. Zim the Farsha with the Posach Beresha. There's sometimes he elucidates. Rebu Danosi writes the Mishnah. He elucidates what's first stated in the Mishnah. Zim the Hudasolik with Farsha Beresha. And the time that he elucidates the closing statement with what? That's what he elucidates first. Okay? 
So therefore, it's no question. The mission itself starts Kanui Nidorim. Then it says Yodos Nidorim. And when it goes to elucidate it, what does it elucidate first? It gives examples of Yodos, rather than giving examples of Kinuyim. In other situations, it goes to give examples. It goes to elucidates the opening statement. Not similar to Mishnah. The Tana has different ways to present the cases. No, but they could have committed the same thing. They could have, but no, it, it varies. It varies. Sometimes it's sometimes that way. Okay, let's let's see the round. Just take it one thing at a time. It's right before the lines get wider. Possibly Kinuyan, the Suyados. Near the Doha Pirusha. He says, this, the Ron says, this is understanding. Vari Tana be Kinuyan Posa. The Mishnah begins with Kinuyan. The Afilu Yabba de Mastis and Nechsero. He says, even if you say the Mishnah is, 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 has been deleted, Lo Mechsero of Reisho. Shein Odom Chasib Rosh Dvorov. Elebem. So if a person starts speaking, do you miss the first point? When you start speaking, you, op- you have the opening. And then you may. There may be like an oversight, so you leave, you, you delete something a little further into the discussion. But to say you were meant to start with Yodos and you just skipped over it, that's not usually the way it works. Since the Mishnah begins with Kinuyin, I feel Tonanami Yodos, even though the Mishnah does say Yodos, have a late Lefrusha, Ahu de Posach Boberesha, what should you should elucidate first? The, the, your, your opening statement. If the Mishnah starts with Kinuyin, Correct? What should the first thing the Mishnah should do today? What a Kinuyim. Vesu Yodos in Shinu also. How do we discuss, give examples of Yodos where the Mishnah doesn't discuss Yodos before? Shekan, Shokhan, Shere Luis Kiran, Tchilo, Kadeshi, Farish Osan, Umetoritz Kushabas Raiso. He answered the second question first. Ukomar, I rebohon, Kobo Chusir Mechser, factually, Yodos has been deleted from the Mishnah. So now the Mark goes to ask the first question. Although you answered the second question, but the second question is a question. The first question is a question. If you start with Kinuyin, what should be the first thing to be elucidated? What you began speaking, presenting. That's the, the format of the Tano that he always elucidates the closing statement before he elucidates the opening statement. Someone asked the question, you need to say, that's the normal format of the Tana. He always elucidates the closing statement rather than the opening statement. What was the Meaning, that's always. He then, what? All the Mishnai should be the same. Meaning, Okay, now it just explains what there is the person who inherits from someone, and when he dies, he inherits to that same person. Right? A father inherits sons, children. Who inherits, but doesn't, when he dies, doesn't pass on to the inheritance to the person he inherits from. The son dies, and a son inherits a mother, but a mother does not inherit a son. Mutaris Labale, and then we have Mishnah. That those who are permitted to their husbands, Basurus leave Mayim, they're not permitted to the Yavim. The first pair of Yish Mutoros, Kohen Hejit Shnos Almona. And the one who Kohen marries an Almona, a widow. The Yish Lach Kohen Godel, he has a brother who's a Kohen Godel. So watch this, she's permitted to the husband, but she's not permitted to the Yavim. And you have a case, Mutoros leave Mayim, they're permitted to the Yavim, Basurus leave Mayim, Kohen Godel Shekidish is Almona. A Kohen Godel who just betrothed an Almona. The Yish Lach Kohen Hejit, and he dies. Then you have a case, Tuna Shem and Levono. There's certain Menochas which require oil and spices. On the first pair, Kola Menochas, Mitras Hasolis, Hamachs Vamrecheshes. The different types of Menochas, Shem and Levono, which Mitra does not need the Levono, the spice. Mitras the Soch, when you bring an Ola, an Ola had to be accompanied with, with a Mitra. So that Mitra does not, ha- the Mitras the Sochim doesn't have the Levono. Tunis Agosh, there's certain things you, you touch to the Mizbeach. Shegea Koinis a Mincha, Bekerin Jormis Marobis. He takes the Mincha and he touches it in the vessel to the su- southwestern corner. Kirichsev, as it says, so it's Torah Sa Mincha, Hakri Vosim Nearon, Lefne Hashem. You should bring it before Hashem, Farshi, Beperko, you may be. The Hainu, Keren Jormis Marobis. You bring it and you touch it to the southwestern corner of the Mizbeach. 
There's certain things, Menachos, which you, you wave. Tenufa, Kohen Meneach Yod Tachs Yadabai, Lumenev. The coin puts his hand under the by, under the owner and they wave it. Tuna hagosh vein tuna hagun tenufa. Hainu mitas chote. Tuna ha tenufa and tuna hagosha. Hainu loku. Now what needs waving and you don't touch it in mizbeach? Hainu lok shemit shel mitzora. The pint of oil of the mitzora. Ba'ashamu have a bikurim, his guilt offering, and the bikurim, the bikurim. What do you do? You wave, but you don't bring it, touch it to the mizbeach. Okay, good. So my answer is, there's no specific order. Sometimes the Tana elucidates the opening statement. Sometimes he elucidates the closing statement. That's one answer. So we start with kinuyim, and the first thing the Tana elucidates is what is the closing statement. That's our Mishnah, right? We start from Kinuyim, then we speak Yodos, then it goes to elucidate Yodos. Ibo same another answer. Now, the, the, now we're getting into discuss here. I, or it could be said, Yodos I the the Asin the Jerusha, Mufarish Lo Behon. Now, how do we know Yodos the Darim in the Darim? Right? How do we know that if you say make an error in an abbreviated context, although you didn't fully verbalize it, it's considered like a full statement. It's it's, it's extrapolated from a pasuk which we're going to have in a few moments. So because it's learned from the Jerusha, it has a special importance. Therefore, that's the first thing he wants to address. Neto, that that you're able to make a netto. So that's explicit in the Torah. Why can we even adorm can adorm? Why is the jargon of netto, why is it a netto? Because a netto is whatever language you speak. The Torah doesn't say you have to make a netto in Hebrew. It, you speak English, whatever the language is. So if that's the case, there's no chidush. There's no, in Kinuyim, so we start off with what's most obvious. Kinuyim, Dorim, Kinuyim, That's the most obvious. I don't have to give you examples of that. That's the most obvious. But when I speak about, to elucidate, that a Yad, although the Dorim have to be verbalized. So maybe if you didn't fully verbalize, maybe it's not a Neder. Therefore, that's the first thing the Tanakh goes to explain, that even if you didn't fully verbalize the Neder, it's as if you actually said the Neder. So more S. Emel Yodos Asin the Asim Yudroshim first of Bohon. So it says the Lifta Chadeim Beresha. Yeah. So why doesn't open it if it's considered special because it's extrapolated from a Yudrosha? Why doesn't it begin? So more answers. Lifta Posim Bikinuyin Doraisa Beresha. Something that's explicit in Torah which is Kinuyin because a netter could be made in any language. Therefore, that's the opening statement. Vohadim Forish Yodos and then it goes to elucidate what a Yodos. That's the Yudrosha which is drawn. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> From the drasha, Sigmar asks, "Hani chlamad yom ekinuye in loshin the nochrim." The base is machlokish. Rabbi Yochanan is shlokish. What is the basis for kinuyin? Is it just that's the way people speak? That's called loshin nochrim. It's just it was incorporated as part of the regular vernacular of people. Well, Chazal they chose specific words to be used because since a person normally associates this word with Hashem, and they were concerned that a person would actually say the word of Hashem in vain. So by using, by changing it and saying it differently, the person won't say the Shem Hashem. So it says, It is very good, according to Rabbi Yochanan, that the basis of Kinoi, it's because it's part of the way the Goyim speak. Leos, it's chazom. They legislated the specific words to be used in these various contexts. Leos, not of Michael and Meimar. So it comes out Kinuyan is not explicit in the Torah. That's something which came about later. So it says, Mikton Yodos. He says, does it say Yodos in the Mishnah? It doesn't say Yodos. Right? The Mishnah, how do we answer? The Mishnah, in our Mishnah, you will not, the word Yodos is not mentioned. So what do we say? It was deleted. And the Tana, oh, it has to be inserted. So rather than inserting it, for second, you'll insert it at the beginning. Until now, we're saying if anything that's overlooked is always overlooked later in the Mishnah. We're saying now, Yodos, really the Mishnah should start with Yodos. And that's it. According to Reish Lokish, that Kinuyim is what was legislated by Chazal, by the Chachomim. So you, you can't tell me the reason why it starts with Kinuyim because it's, it's in the Torah. Kinuyim is not in the Torah because it was legislated by Chazal. So if that's Yodos, should start, the mission start with Yodos, because that's a Doraisa. And that he says that you're right. Just as we said, it was deleted. 
and it was inserted. So you know what? It was deleted. But where do I start? Where, where do I begin the Mishnah? I begin the Mishnah with Yodos. V'lav chasuri komachsaris. Agdim nami v'tani Yodos. The opening statement of the Mishnah, according to Reish Lakish, it starts with Yodos nedarim kinedarim. Kol Yodos nedarim kinedarim. Kol kinui nedarim kinedarim. It starts with Yodos. Second sta- is stated is kinuyim, and then it says ve'eluhen Yodos. And what are, what are examples of Yodos? Oben chaderu ve'eluhen kinuyim. Koneim koneach koneim. Okay, let's see Rashi, the Ran, I mean. Ibo Seima. This is interesting. The Ran says, Yodos Dasin Midrasha. That the reason why Yodos are mentioned or elucidated first, because it's extrapolated from Midrasha, which the Nira Lee, don't you come out. Vade de Leka Kapeda de Milso. Kit Kamrit. De Voleko Limiflik. We brought examples. Sometimes the Tano elucidates the second statement. Sometimes he elucidates the first statement. Mukri Shapir miu b'mastis lo temo chadim inayu nokat el bedafka agdim yodos mishum nasi midrasha. But our mission is different. In our mission, the Tana intentionally mentions elucidates yodos first. Why? Because it's drawn from a from a limud. Ki posu mikinuin do raiso shke derchatan lahaschu bedvorm hayudu mabshutim. The Tana starts with what's obvious. What's most obvious? Kinui in the Dharm, Kinu Dharm. That's obvious because any language you speak, if you make a netter, it's a netter. So, if, in, let's say in, in the language they use a certain word, I'll give you an example. Let's say a person speaks Yiddish. Speaks Yiddish. And you make a netter in Yiddish. Is it a Chidush that the netter is a netter? The Torah says you verbalize in your language. So, let's say a person makes a, makes a netter that he's not, he, potatoes are off, off limits to him. And he says in Yiddish, Irvanish es in potatoes. Potatoes is not, a, is not a Yiddish word. But a person who speaks Yiddish living in the United States, that's the word he uses. He uses potato. So potato is an English word which has been incorporated in the Yiddish. That's, that's a kinui. A kinui, that's a kinui. He says, in English it's, it's pronounced potato. It's not called potato. So potato is the Yiddishizing of the word potato. Now that, that, that would be a kinui. So if you hold, that's Loshin Nochrim, like Rish like Rabbi Yochanan. Anything that's been become part of the language, it's, it's the language. So according to Rabbi Yochanan, so what's Kinuye Nedar Kinedarim? That's under, what's most obvious we start with. And when we elucidate something, what do we want to elucidate? Something that's not obvious on the Torah level. Elamandium Loshin Baducha Chomim Lios No there. But what about if you, you're of the opinion like Rish Lokish? That kinuyim was specifically legislated by the Chachomim, although it has a Torah, a Torah value. Before he should come, the Gemara explains why. Shimyoma korban. Let's say a person would say korban. How does a person normally say korban? When you say a netter, what do you normally say? You say, this bread should be forbidden to me konam. Like konam is really korban, except they want you to say the word konam rather than korban. Because usually the Torah, when it says the word carbon, how does the Torah express itself? Carbon Lashem. Let's say the person would say, this bread should be forbidden to me. And instead of saying carbon, by accident, he says Lashem. So he's, he's saying the name Hashem in vain. Right? So what did they say? By saying the word konam, they said, say it differently. Say konam, say koneach. A person is not going to associate Lashem with that word. When you want to consecrate something, there, the person will say carbon Lashem. The person will say korban lashem. It should be a korban fashem. But when you make a netter, a person will say the bread should be korban, and he says and he says he leaves out the word. He says lashem. That's Moshe Shem Shemuel Avatol. He's saying name Hashem in vain. So by saying the, using the word konam koneach or kones, there's no confusion. That word will not in any way be confused with Hashem. Okay. Because when we said the Mishnah says, because that's called Hatfosa. One of the ways to say a netter is this should be something. How did a carbon come about? It, it's, it's man-made, right? You not this should be like a carbon. You, you have no specific carbon. There's a concept of carbon in the Torah. This bread should be off limits like a carbon. That's consecrated lush. The object, the bread should be like a korban, right? So they say, but you say korban, korban usually goes almost as synonymous with Hashem. 
but say this bread should be konam. Konam, that word has no relevance to Hashem. So people will not confuse and accidentally say Lashem. <coughs> right, 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 correct, 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 correct. Someone says, Michael the Maymar, I've got them with the rice and Nami, him, Kamosh Kasab, Mishno, Saint Afilbohi, Ain of Shutim, Yosem Yodos, the Shiasu with Ajrabo, Yodos Pshitit Fedos and Midrosho. So now to more answers, Akim Nami with Tony Yodos, Hashim Shum Dokin, Hadrina, and Mimaidinok, with the Gemurs retracting what originally said that when a Tano, there's an oversight in the Mishnah, the first, the first thing is never the oversight, it's like down in, in the middle of the discussion. Because now we're saying the first statement in the Mishnah should have said, Yodos Nadorim Kinadorim. That's what we're saying now. Kulasug Li Mursuri Di Hasri Mersur Resho de Milsa Lomersro. Bamrina was saying now the Lamandium Loshin Bodukha Homi but a coin Resh Lokish. Havi Resham Khasra, we say the opening statement was, was there was an oversight. The Mishnah should have started by saying Yodos Nadorm Kinadorim. Of course that's more obvious than what? Than Kinuyim. Because Kinuyim was a fabrication by Chazal. They came up with a word. I mean, the first time my deposit, the Haitano, Ibo Seimo, Ochi Koma, the Tana, Nasdisin, Sidra Nokat, Nokat, Lefrusha, Yodos Bereisha, Mar Mehecho de Solok Mine, Mishum de Aslan Midrosha, Lotrich Lefrusha, Vinoim Mehecho de Posar Bey, the Yodos Aslan Midrosha, Roy Lagdimon, the Chnuyen, Shen and El Doshim Okay, now, now we're going to get involved. Now we're going to ask the question. What is the basis that Yodos Nedarim Kinadorim? I mean, the Torah says a netter is dependent on the articulation. How do we know that a, partic a, a partial articulation is the equivalent of a full part articulation? That's the first question now. The Yodos Hechuksiv, where does it say Yodos in the Torah? We're saying it's from the Drusha. What is the Drusha? What are the Psukim that we draw this from? It says, Ishki Yafli Lindor Neder. You have, you have a place normal. A man who specifies Lindor Neder. There's a word that's superfluous there. It should say Lindor, right? What's the, what's the reiteration? Lindor Neder, to, to make a Neder. Lindor itself should be sufficient. What's the, the reiteration? Then it says Nozil Hazil Hashem. Also, there's a reiteration. Nazir is the Nazirite. Lazir. What do you, it says Nazir. Ishki Yafli Lindor, then it say Nozil Hashem. What what is there a double expression? Lindor Neder, Nozil Hazir. Betanyo, so we learned in the Bryce, Nozil Hazir, Lasus Kinui Nazirus Kinazirus, Yodus Nazirus Kinazirus. We say that using a, a reference which is not exactly as the word says by Nedormo Nazirus, it's the same. Eli Elabin Nazirus Kinadorim. Ela bin Nazirus, bin Nadorim Yenayim. How do we know by Nadorim also that what, that Kinuye Nadorim and Nazir, Tamalobi Ishki Yafli Nun Neder, Lazil Hashem, Makish Nazirus Lindorim. Since in the same posting it mentions Neder and Nazirus, we're equating A to B, we'll say and B to A. Okay, Makish Nazirus and Nadorim and Dorm Nazirus. We equate Nazirus to Nadorim and Dorm Nazirus. Ma Nazirus, Osabo Yodos, Nazirus, Ki Nazirus. Just as when it says Nozir Lahazir. Yeah? The Nozir to make Nozir Lahazir. From there we learn, as we'll, the Gemara will explain, that even if you say, let's say a person would say, I'd say Harani Nozir and you would say an I. When you said an I, did you, did you verbalize Nozir? You didn't say I, I, I should be a Nozir. But since I connotes what you want to be, that's sufficient. Although you didn't say the full word, I want to be a Nazir. Okay? So similarly, just as by Nazir, we say, Yodos Nazirus Kinaziris. Af Nidorim Osabem, Yodos Nidorim Kinadorim. So the same thing. If, let's say, this bread should be forbidden konam. And then you say, and the second bread should be like the first bread. It should be like first bread in what, in what context? 
But since he said, right, that, that's a word, that's Yodayim. Umad Dorim over Bebal Yachil. What happens if a person makes a netter and he violates his word? Your violation, it's a negative commandment. You should not make light of your words. Ubal Tacher. Let's say a person consecrates an animal. Or a person says, I will bring an animal. He lets three regolim pass. Then you're ready. You delayed bringing your korban. Or you delayed fulfilling your netter. Your violation, Bal Tacher. So by Nedarim, it's explicitly, the Torah says, Bal Yachel Dvoro. Ubal Af Nezirus. So if a person goes and violates his Nezirus, Ovi Bebal Yachel. If a, if, a, if a nozzle drinks wine or cuts his hair or goes into a cemetery, he's in violation of Bal Yachel because he violated, he said, I'm a nozzle. Nozzle means you're bound by the laws of Nezirus. So if you go and you drink wine, that means you violated your word. You're in violation. O Bal Tachir, which the will discuss. O Madidorim of Mayfir Nidre Bito, just as a father is able to nullify the Nidorim of his daughter through what? Until she's fully mature, until 12 and a half years old. And a husband can nullify the Nidorim of his wife, which is explicit in the Torah. Avnezirus, the same thing, a daughter who makes herself into a Nazir, or a wife who makes herself into a Nazir. Avnefer Nidre Bito, Nazirus Bito, a father can nullify the Nazirus of his daughter. Obalmefer Nazirus Ishto, and the husband could be Mefer, could nullify the Nazirus of his wife. So now the Gemara asks. So where do I, the Bryce that we're quoting now, from where do I learn Yodayim? Yodos, we learn Yodos Nazirus can Nazirus, and I'm learning the Dorim from Nazirus in, in regards to Yodayim. So the Gemara ask, Maishna Gabi Nazirus, why do we say, why are we able to, how do we know Yodayim by, by Nazirus? Maishna Gabi Nazirus, Nozil Hazir. So seemingly it's from the reiteration. The Torah is reiterating the word Nazir. Not only when you say it in its full context, even in its partial context. It's as if you said it fully. It's more says, Nindorim Nami. So, Bedorim also says, Toksiv Lindor Neder. It's also, it's expressing itself in a way which it's reiterating it. Lindor would be enough to say, if you say it in its full context. The second Neder says, even in partial context, it's the equivalent of that. Vacation Lomali, so what do I need? A Hekish? What do I have to draw Neder from Nazir? Not in, the in, in their own right, we have a posse which indicates that a partial expression is equivalent of a full expression. See, it's a different order. The verb by neder follows the, 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 uh, the subject. Neder lindor. Over there it says, nozir lazir. Right? It would say, lended nidor. That's the same format. Then I would say it. Then I wouldn't have to equate one to the other. I don't have to draw from the other. Just what it says by, by the way it's written. It says Lindor. To make the Neder. Stop. The reason why the Torah speaks, that's the way the Torah speaks. Something, you know, we say there's nothing superfluous in the Torah. But there is an opinion that says, very often the Torah expresses itself the way people speak. When people speak, we speak in a certain way, like to emphasize a point. It could have said Lindor. Ishki Yafli Lindor. If a person speaks clearly, Lindor means to make a nether. So what do you have to say, Lindor Nether? The word Nether is, is superfluous, correct? It, it would have been enough to say Lindor. The word Lindor means to make a nether. What do you have to say, Lindor Nether? To make a nether. The word Lindor itself connotes he's making a nether. You know, the Torah speaks, that's the way people speak, that's the way the Torah speaks. So if that's the case, I have to draw, so how do I need a So if that's the case, I have to draw from Nozil Lahazir. Because there it's, it's inverted. People don't speak that way. You don't say Nozil, you say Lahazir Nozir. Here it, put the, it puts the noun before the verb. So f therefore, I have to learn Nadorim from the Zeros. No. This is all. This is all. Uh, this is all Masora. How to interpret the Torah? This is all Masora. Mas no, no, no. One's Lindor. No. And Nazir? No, no. Nazir is a Zion. Yeah, that's the same. That's the same. One is a verb. One's the noun. Nazir, same thing. Except the difference is that it, it, it's inverted. Lindor Neder means to make the Neder. The other is Nazir. The Nazir who became a Nazir. 
Correct, correct, correct. So the additional word is superfluous. You say, you know something, but, but that's the way people speak. People speak, you always put the verb before the noun, but you don't put the noun before the verb. So why by nausea is the noun put before the verb? To teach me that even if you say a partial expression, it's equivalent to a full expression. So therefore, what am I drawing? Therefore, I have to draw the Dorim from the zeros. So Mar says, that's very good if you say the Torah expresses itself the way people speak. It's like a reiteration. But if you say the Torah, there's nothing superfluous in Torah. The Torah doesn't, regardless how people speak, so even by neder, the word neder is, is, is superfluous. So he says, you know, according to that opinion, the extra word I learned really, yodos by nedorim. If you say the Torah does not speak the way people speak. So therefore, even by the blindo netter, the word netter is, is superfluous. So what does it tell us? The word netter is to teach me that even if you say a partial expression, it's like a full expression. So how do I know yodos nezirus? I draw yodos nezirus from yodos nedori. Yeah? So the Torah says lindo netter. What do I learn from there? That a partial expression is full expression by, ne by nedori. And the Torah juxtaposes to that. Lin Nozir lahazir. Nozir is like neder. So, if that's the, so what do I do with the extra word, lazir? The word lazir is superfluous. So that's the first question. So it says, And I learned nozir from the dorim. So now we said, And nozir lahazir, dorish leg. And what do I do? Nozir lahazir. Melame cha nezirus. Chalala nezirus. Get this. Let's say a person says, Hareini nozir. Let's say a person would say, I swear I will not eat this piece of bread. And he sa says that, I swear I will not eat this piece of bread. What is the second oath? It's an oath in vain. You already swore you're not going to eat the bread. Correct? Let's say he says same, takes the same oath twice. Twice He says, I swear I will not eat this piece of bread. With, let's say it doesn't make a difference. The second oath doesn't have any value. You ready? It's forbidden. With, you ready? Pr uh, prohibited to yourself with a shvur. What's the second value of the second? So let's say a person would say like this: Today I will be a nazir. What does that mean? That means the 30 days that you restricted from wine, cutting here and going to a cemetery, you're bound for 30 days. Starting when today? Let's say a person will make another statement: Today I will be a nazir. What's the value of the second statement? They would say nothing. I learned from nazir lahazir that even though you made the second statement on the same day. When you finish counting the first day, 30 days, you have to start another 30 days. That's, that's what I learned from Nozir Lahazir. That even though you made both statements on the same day, and you can't begin the second the zeros on the day because you already committed yourself those days for the first statement, nevertheless, when it's completed, you start another zeros. Yeah? That's Shan Nazirus Chalala Nazirus. That's what I use Nozir Lahazir. Okay? So it's good. So how do I know your Yodos Nedorim Kinedorim if you hold low Dibra Torah Kolosh Neodom? The Torah does not speak the way people speak. The Lindor Neder. And how do I know Yodos by Nezirus? Because the Torah juxtaposes Nezirus to Neder. But what do I do with the extra word which is written by Nozir? It says Nozir Lahazir. From there I learn it. From the extra word Lahazir, what do I learn out? That if a person makes two statements on the same day, today I'll be a Nozir, Although, without the posting, I would say the second statement is not binding because that has no value. Nevertheless, I learned from there that when the first 30 days are up, you're committed to, co to commit for another 30 days. Although you said Hayom twice. You didn't say in 30 days I'll be a Nazir. I said today I'll be a Nazir, today I'll be a Nazir. That's sufficient. To, you, you're bound that in 30 days you have to start counting a new Nazirus. Right. Therefore, therefore, I'm able to draw from Nadorim that Yodos Nadorim can Nadorim. And how do I Nazir? Because Nazir is juxtaposed to what? To Nadorim. But, but I have the extra word written by Nazir. What do I do with that extra word? To tell me that if a person makes a double statement, today I'll be a Nazir, the second Nazir is Chal. It takes effect. No, but if you hold the Torah, it doesn't express itself like man. That means there's no word that's extra. You know, there's, there's, there's no place for reiteration. 
people, they, they, they express this way because you want to emphasize, you want to reiterate. Torah doesn't reiterate, Torah doesn't emphasize. So if that word's written, it's written for a specific purpose. What is its purpose? It should have said nazir. What's lahazir? The word lahazir is totally superfluous. To teach me this, that even the, he said the same statement twice on the same day, he's bound to count an additional 30 days and 30 days from now. Okay? It's a machlokas tanoim. This is machlokas tanoim. That's what going back and forth. If you're of the opinion that the Torah does express itself as people speak, so that no, Lindor Neder is not superfluous. But Nozel Lahazir is because the Torah inverts it. So therefore, I know, the, uh, I know Yodos Nezirus from the extra word Lahazir. And how do I Nedorim? Because the Torah juxtaposes Nedorim to Nozir. But if you hold Lo Dibet Torah, Lo Shemnei Yodom, the Torah doesn't reiterate something, doesn't emphasize something. So why did Torah write Lindo Neder to teach me Yodos? So if that's the case, I'm able to learn the zeros from the Dorim, but that extra word, Lahazir, is extra. From that I learn, the zeros chala on the zeros. So now the Gemara goes back and asks a question. So according to the opinion that the Torah speaks as people speak. Right? So now, how do I know Yodos now? If, the, if we say the Torah speaks as people speak. So Lindo Neder, I can't draw from that Yodos Nedorim, right? Because the word Lindo Neder is the way a person speaks. So how do I know Yodos? It's, it's from Nozel Hazir, right? Because the Torah inverts it, right? It's inverted. So from there I draw Yodos Nezirus, Kinezirus. And how do I know Nedorim? Because the Torah juxtapo- juxtaposes Nedorim to Nezirus. So now the more asks, so how do I know now that Nezirus Chal and Nezirus? How do you know that it first made a double statement on the same day that the second statement has value. Samar asks, Nozel lahazir, Dorish, Lassus, the others, Norm, Kinezirus, Shanzirus, Chalan, Zirus, Menole, says, Honi, Ho, Israel, Lake, Commander, Main, Zirus, Chalan, Zirus. If you're of the opinion that it's truthfully the second statement has no value, it's not a problem. El, Israel, Lake, Commander, Yom, Zirus, Chalan, Zirus. But if your opinion that it does, that making that same statement the same day, the second statement has value, then now you have to count additional 30 days. When the 30 days are up, no lake, right? From where do I draw it? I don't have a posuk. Because Nozel Hazar I'm using for what? For Yodos Nedorim. And that thing where it says, name it, Kroh, Lezor. What's Lahazir? Because it says, Nozir, Lezor. Grammatically, it's correct. Nozir, Lezor. What, what's the, the extra hey? Lahazir. My Lahazir, Shamit, Botarti. So I learned both. From, I draw both. It's very good. Nozel Lezor, I learn Yodis Nedorm, Yodis Nezirus Kinezirus. And the extra hey comes to teach me that Nezirus is Chalon Nezirus. That if you make the same statement, today I will be a Nozer, today I will be a Nozer, that although logically the second statement should have no value, nevertheless it takes on value. Okay, let's see the run. Stuff in the Omid Beis, we'll leave the Omid Aleph for tomorrow. Counting 30 days is not sufficient. He has to count a double, a double uh, amount of Nezirus. Even though you already accepted upon yourself to be a Nazir, you're able to accept an additional Nezirus upon yourself. If you are of the opinion one is zeros, can't come upon the other, it's okay. Even though the Gemara concludes in the second parak, the Kuli Almo, Omar, Hare, and they use this posuk. Lindor <laughs> Okay. The Marova Amri in Eretz Yisrael they would say 
is kind of the mapul yodos midlindo nether. This is in the Ertzal, they said there is an opinion. How do you know yodos norm kinadorim? I learned it from Lindo Nether. So if you learn it from Lindo Nether, what does that opinion hold? Lo Dibra Torah Kolosh Meyodom. The Torah does not express itself the way people speak. So that's one opinion in Eretz Yisrael. The, the Istano, and there's another opinion, the Mapak Law means Kol Hayotim Mipiv Yaseh. Anything that comes out of your mouth, you should say. So Rashi goes to explain. Now, what's the Aloha? If a person makes a Nether, and it says, I make a netter that these two pieces of bread are, are forbidden to make, like a korban. So they're both not permitted. Now he goes to a chacham, and he nullifies po- the netter partially. He says, if I would have known that I need one of the two, I wouldn't have made the netter. Yes, originally made the netter. He says, both pieces of bread are forbidden to me like a korban. Goes before a panel, and he says, if I would have known that I needed one of the two, I wouldn't have made the netter on both. After they nullify one, the other piece of bread, is it bound by the original netter? The answer is no. We say, that if a netter is partially nullified, the whole netter is nullified. Okay? How do we know that? Of course, it says, Kol pivyase. All that you originally you expressed as a netter, you must keep. That's only if, if, if it's all intact. If originally what I said is still intact, then I must keep it all. But what about part of it is, is not intact any longer because it was partially nullified? Then you don't have to keep what you said. Then the whole netter is gone. From here, I also learn Yodos Nadorim. Whatever you express from your mouth, you must be bound to. Even if you say a partial expression, not a full expression, you're bound by the partial expression. So one learns it from Lindo Nether. So the first one holds Lo Dibetor Koloshim Neodom. If the Torah does not express itself as a man, the person speaks, so the word Nether is superfluous. I learn from there. That what? That Yodos Norkinor. What about if you hold Dibra Torah Koloshim Neodom? I'm able to draw it from the second posuk. Koloshim Pivyase. That whatever you s- comes out of your mouth, you're bound to. That even if you say a partial expression, you're bound by the partial expression. Let's see, Raj, the Ran. The Maravo, Kloma, Losfirli, Dimlahazi, Darshinon, Tarti. In their stroll, they, they don't learn from the hay. That if the netter is fully intact, you, you're bound to what you said. But it, it, half of it doesn't, doesn't remain intact. It's time to map a little bit if you're of the opinion that a per- Torah expresses itself as a person, so Linda Netter is not a basis to learn Yodos. I'm able to draw from the Yodos partial. Okay. We have a few minutes. I, there's a run on Ahmed Aleph, which is important, which we didn't do. Okay, we'll go further. We'll do the run <coughs> tomorrow on that. Okay, now we're going back on the Brysa. What else do I learn? We, we have a Hekish. We're Makish, Nedorim to Nazirus. And Nazirus, what do I draw? Nazir, what do I draw from Neder? A Neder, if you violate the Neder, you're violation of Baltachir. Baltachir is written where? By Neder. But since the Torah juxtaposes Baltach for Bal Yachel, you're not permitted to profane your words. That's written by Neder. How do I know that if you violate your Nazirus, you're in violation of that law? To get Malchus. Because the Torah juxtaposes Nazirus to Neder. So just as by Neder I have a law of Bal Yachel, you should not profane your words. When you make yourself a Nazir, you should not profane your words. Just as by Neder, that if you delay it three regalim, you're in violation of Bal Tacher. Do not delay it. By Nazir also, if you delay it, you're in violation of, of delaying it. Okay? But where's that drawn from? From the Hekish. That's from the juxtaposing of Nazir to Neder. Okay? So Mar Nader Gemara says, Oma Mar Kolayotsmi Vyase. Yeah. Oma Nidorim Ovi Bal Yachel U Bal Tacher. It says, 
Just as the door and the Bryce says you're in violation of Bal Yachel. You should not profane your words. And Bal Ta'acher, somewhere it's Bishlam Bal Yachel. Then the door and Mishkachas Lo. Find the door. Where do we find Bal Yachel? Go to Omer Kikazu. Ochel. A person makes a kikur, says, I will eat this, this, this loaf of bread. Velo Ochlo. And you do not. A person takes, takes a, makes an oath. I swear I will eat this piece of bread. And he does not eat it. Ovim Shabal Yachel Dvoro. You're in violation of Bal Yachel. Elo Bal Yachel did Nazir Sechim Shkachos Lo. What's the case of Bal Yachel? Kevin, the Yom Haredi Nozer. At the moment the person says, Haredi Nozer. You're a Nozer immediately. What happens if you drink wine? What did you violate? You violated the law of Nazirus. Because the Mar understands now, just as when you violate your netter, how many lavim are you in violation? I make a netter, this bread is off limits to me, and you eat that bread. Correct? What did you violate? One lav, the lav of Lo Yachil. So Mar understands you have a case of Nazirus where you only violation of one lav. Right? Just as by netter, you're in violation of one lav, you profane your words. By Nazir, you also you have a situation where you're only violation of one lav. So in that what are you talking about? The hair, multiple things are happening. That's the more, said so they're not really equal. That's the worst question. Came the rain, you Nazir. You become a Nazir, you're not permitted to eat, let's say, grapes. Shosa, Komle, below Yishte, you're not permitted to drink wine. Omer, Abelov, Abelov, Bishnayim. No, that's not a problem. When we're equating Nazirus, we're not saying just as Neder, it's one. Here it's also one. No, we say just as by Neder, you're in violation of Baal Yachel. When you violate your Nazir, you're also in violation of Yachel. But it's multiple lavim. You're in violation of the lavim that are written by Nazir. And in addition, you're in violation of profaning your words, which is written where? Which is written by Nadorim. Second. Base. Yeah. Over here, you have to just change the. You have to insert the word "ani" because we're talking about it. He said he will not eat. He does eat it. Go to Oma Kikzu ani ochel v'ochlo. He says that this this because again, netter is not. I will eat. It's when you won't eat. It says Hadi Yabal Yach be Nadorim. So if you go to Oma Kikzu ani ochel v'ochlo, and he did eat it, right? And he did eat it. Not that he did not eat it. We'll stop here. Okay?